St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the pastor of Our Lady of Soros Parish here in Toronto, Father Nino Covoto. A good day to those of you joining us for the television televised Mass here at St. Basil's and to those of you across the land. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are Eugene and Eileen Graham from Lethbridge, Alberta. For people with terminal illnesses, Eileen has MS and Eugene has Parkinson's. And for peace and good health for their children and their families. Eugene and Eileen are celebrating their 55th wedding anniversary today. The second is a parishioner of Blessed Sacrament Parish in Ottawa, Ontario, and our thanks go out to our two donors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And we celebrate today the Feast of the Dedication of St. John Lateran in Rome. Let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries of our faith by asking God for pardon and for strength. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You have come to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, <clears throat> O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who from living and chosen stones prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by new growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, Jesus drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The people then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, as the uh, years um, go by and as I uh, try to prepare homilies and various uh, passages from Scripture come my way, I always um, think that I am increasing uh, my knowledge of the historical Jesus uh, by the uh, not only personal meditations but also the commentaries that are available. It is um, a very uh, interesting facet of our own spiritual growth to uh, try to understand the historical Jesus and especially the uh, conflict that Jesus had uh, in his ministry. We often uh, romanticize uh, our Lord, and certainly he was a man of love, a person of love, a God of love, and said very beautiful and uh, sensitive and compassionate uh, words. Uh, But we cannot uh, underestimate the uh, human conflicts uh, that Jesus experienced, especially with uh, leaders of the institutions and the leaders uh, in authority at his time. And so, for example, these days, yesterday, we saw one clash between, between Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes. And uh, in that particular occasion, you may remember that uh, Jesus had this uh, ability to bring people together who ordinarily wouldn't have anything to do with each other. He was at the home of the Pharisee, and he was accused of eating and uh, dining with the sinners and tax collectors and uh, the Pharisees themselves were in the picture, and we just know uh, that there would be no way uh, that uh, all those different facets of society uh, would be together in the same place at the same time if it wasn't for Jesus. And of course, he's trying to speak a language of love. He's trying to shake up the uh, relationships that people had with each other and trying to help them understand how interrelated they were to each other and how certainly equal they were in the eyes of God. And then again today in what is often uh, referred to as the uh, passage with the title The Cleansing of the Temple, uh, we see that Jesus once again uh, is in conflict with uh, those in power and uh, those in authority. If we were to imagine, for example, the uh, Central Bank of Canada, the uh, Royal Canadian Mint, where all the money is uh, printed, the uh, Revenue Service, and also the International Currency Exchange, imagine for a moment all of those uh, organizations in the same place, under one roof, in one institution, 
And um, attached to uh, that uh, aspect, uh, which is certainly crucial because the economy and finances, as we know today, is a very crucial element in any society. But imagine uh, combined with that is the reality that uh, within this institution was also the one official religion, the one official church. And furthermore, on the top of all that structure, you had one imperial king who controlled every aspect of life of that particular institution. Well, in a sense, that could have been the uh, temple that Jesus walked into at that time. The temple of Jerusalem was not, as we might imagine our churches, perhaps a, a building with four walls, but the temple was a complicated place with the different areas and different facets of activity, uh, including worship, but also many other things that occurred. And uh, picture for a moment in this, uh, in this institution, this modern institution, that uh, a genius uh, would, for example, um, uh, tamper with the computer and everything would crash and uh, fall. Well, Jesus, in a sense, brought that institution uh, down. And uh, he, uh, it's a surprise that he was not arrested and even executed as a terrorist for the conflict uh, that he had en entered into. And uh, yet, this is uh, our Lord Jesus Christ who came to shake up society as he found it and to perhaps uh, draw not only his opponents, but especially the people that were listening to him into closer union with God, a union of love and an intimate relationship with the Lord. And perhaps he needed to uh, shake up the institution that seemed to be so powerful and so strong. And our reflection today is that we hope that this uh, ability, in a sense, to uh, shake up the institutions of our world uh, continue and uh, to see that perhaps even we ourselves in our own fixed uh, way of thinking can also be shaken up at times if it only leads us to greater love of God and certainly love of neighbor. Please join with me now as we offer our prayers and our petitions to our Father in heaven. Let us pray that the church may be strengthened by the vision of Pope Benedict and all our bishops and encouraged by our prayers. For this we pray to the Lord. For our world leaders, may they be open to the gospel message of hope and redemption for all as they form their policies and direct their actions. For them we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are alienated from the church May, be, may they be open to God's faithful and healing presence. For this we pray to the Lord. For those of you at home who have called in and written and sent us your prayers and your petitions, may the God of mercy hear and answer your prayers. For this we pray to the Lord. And for our beloved dead and all who have died, May they come to share in the heavenly kingdom. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty and eternal God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and we ask this of you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, 
the fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. And pray now, my friends, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here, and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive in this place the power of the sacraments and the answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. <clears throat> For in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that, rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. This is temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to two donors. The first are Eugene and Eileen Graham from Lethbridge, Alberta. The second, a parishioner of Blessed Sacrament Parish in Ottawa, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, just send a check or money order payable to the NCBC. And mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C 2M6.